Halloween is quickly approaching, and what better way to prepare and celebrate than making a decoration of our own? And what better decoration to make than a spider climbing from its own web? So in this video, we will be finding the best way to make this spider and setting it up to spook up my house for Halloween. First, I needed an actual spider to use for this decoration. I drove to the store and bought a bunch of them, and a pair of skeleton hands as well. Anyway, we now need a way for the spider to climb up his own web, which is the hard part. Obviously, we need string for the spider to climb, so I chose this white yarn to construct the web. To make the spider climb the string, I got a pack of cheap motors to control the spider. Basically, the motors will wind and unwind the string that the spider will be attached to making it seem like the spider is moving by itself. I set up a quick test using my power supply and a dummy to see if my idea would work, and as we can see, it does, by simply switching the polarity to change which way the motor spins, and therefore we can bring the spider up and down. There are still two big problems we need to address though. First, we need a way to automatically control the movement of the spider so that it can act by itself. Second, we need a way to identify when the spider reaches the top, so that we don't keep winding it unnecessarily. The first problem is easy to solve. We can just use a microcontroller to run the motor. In this case, it will be an ATtiny85, so that way you can save space. The only problem is that we can't directly power the motor from the pins of the microcontroller. That's where this very popular L298N motor driver board comes in, which you can find on places like eBay and AliExpress. This board is a perfect fit for this project, because it has an H bridge driver, meaning that we can drive the motor in both directions by switching the polarity on the motor. It has a PWM input so that we can also control the speed of the motor if we so desire. And finally, it has a 5 volt regulator on board, meaning that we can have a supply of up to 12 volts and have a 5 volt output to power the microcontroller with. The use of the board really makes the circuit required for the rest of the project quite trivial. The second major problem we need to overcome is detecting when the spider reaches the top. I came up with this simple mechanical solution to act as a button. To make it, I first cut this long piece of wood into two smaller rectangles. Then I put them both under the drill press and made three holes. I made sure the holes were big enough by fitting some M4 screws through. I then put tinfoil on the bottom layer. The tinfoil was directly touching one screw, but not the other. However, it was lined up to touch the nut when lifted. This basically means that when the platform is lifted, the two screws are electrically connected. This essentially forms the big button I was talking about that the spider will press when it reaches the top and it will inform the microcontroller to stop moving. As for the software portion of this project, it really isn't that complicated. The first problem that I faced was that the motor couldn't move itself starting with low speeds. So I gave it a startup section where it ran at full speed and then slowed down afterwards. To make the whole system work at startup, we first reset the spider by pulling it up until it pushes the button. We then slowly drop it and then bring it back up. The speed is controlled by the PWM output from the timer on the microcontroller. We can completely stop the motor from spinning by stopping the PWM and replacing it with a low signal. Inversely, we can have the motor move at full speed by writing a high signal instead. To make this work properly outside of a lab setting for Halloween, I soldered everything together on top of a perf board. However, when I went to test this thing off camera, it completely failed. As you can see from the aftermath, the string got completely tangled to the point that the spider won't be able to go back down without manual intervention. This was caused by two things. One, the motor spins too fast, despite my best efforts to slow it down with PWM. And two, the string is not of the best quality to be spooled. To solve this, I got four additions to the project. First, I got this really small and really slow DC motor to replace the first motor. It spins at about 35 RPM thanks to the gearbox at the front. This also eliminates the need for a PWM signal in the microcontroller, which simplifies the code just a little bit. I then finally elevated this motor using a small cut of wood. As for the string wrapping up, I got this bobbin and thread. The thread doesn't twist and tangle as easily as the yarn, and the bobbin keeps the thread in line, acting as a spool. I also put a cut of pool noodle in the hole of the bobbin so that the smaller shaft of the motor could easily fit inside. Also, to route the thread correctly, I put in a small nail and wrapped the string around it so that it would easily reach the spool. 
and one more addition to make this perfect. I needed to make it battery powered. So I grabbed this 9 volt battery. The only problem was that I needed a 9 volt connector, so I made one with this old battery that expired all the way back in 2013. You can make a connector like this too. Just take another 9 volt battery, ideally one that's already dead, and pry out the outer casing off it. Once it is off, you can take this top bit off, and now you have a connector. If you don't want to do this, you can also buy some pre-made connectors online. Now I can place the spider anywhere without needing to worry about connecting it to a power source. With these modifications, the whole contraption works great. The spider can now go up and down. It does move quite slowly, so if you are making this for yourself and you want it to move a bit faster, you can get a motor exactly like the one I have at a higher RPM on places like AliExpress. Well anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and found some inspiration for your spooky season. The project today wasn't too electronically complicated, but it sure was a mechanical challenge. If you did enjoy, please consider subscribing so that you can see the other videos that I make. Have a good one, and have a good Halloween.